What's up guys? Welcome to another video. Today we are going to be talking about boss invasion. I will be going over all of the bosses and the best mechanics and the best strategies for every boss. So if you're not really interested in spoilers, it's not really so much spoilers because everyone in game already knows the mechanics or they have a very good idea of what the best mechanics are. So it's not too much of a spoiler, but if you want to try to keep doing it yourself, this might not be the video for you or if you just want to learn some more information to help you do boss invasion you are good to go so let's start off with the best in slot the max gear you do need all three styles and you do need a two-handed weapon so you have to keep those things in mind those are your your very bare minimum restrictions you need at least every style you don't have to bring um a full armor set exactly what of every style you bring is completely up to you um for example right now in my setup even though i am doing best in slot i have barrels gloves and Barrow's Gloves are not best in slot for any of the three styles. But the thing that they have over the other ones is that they are hybrid. So I think the key here is that you use hybrid gear. And it's completely up to you. If you don't want to use Barrow's Gloves and you think you're going to be meleeing more, you could bring a Silent Gauntlets. They don't have any negative stats, so there's no downside to bringing them. Um, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't have any negative stats. You could also bring the Tormented Bracelet or the, um, the Bracelet of Ethereum for range. You could bring all three of them or not. Um, same with the boots. These boots do actually have a negative magic bonus. So if you wanted, you could bring um, Eternals to switch. It's really just what you want to do and how much switching you want to do. Personally, I don't switch a lot. I don't like switching, so I keep it very minimum to a, just a two-way switch. Three-way, I guess, if you include your weapon. That's how simple I like to keep it. So in terms of gear... The best gear would probably be the armor from it, the Justicar armor. I'm going to show you what the stats of the full set looks like. It's very, very tanky. The downside is you have very bad magic bonus and very bad range bonus. So you would have to bring at least uh, something to switch for those styles. Um, but what it does have is a very nice uh, damage reduction, a 10% damage reduction. You have the full set, which is also why we are using the Elijah. The Elijah actually has a damage reduction as well. The difference between the Elijah and the full set, other than the Elijah being a better damage reduction, is that the Elijah also drains your prayer points, um, a percentage based on what was reducted. So there is sort of a downside of that, but uh, you do get rations in the waves, um, and part of those rations is super prayers. So prayer isn't as important. You can get away with. You definitely, sh you definitely should bring the Elijah if you have it. I would strongly recommend it. And uh, um, in terms of your, your your weapons and whatnot, and that really comes down to, to different people and what they think is worth it and what they actually have, because every monster has a specific weakness. The first monster, the Jungle Demon, is weak to stab, which is a big part of why we're using a Rapier. Not only is Rapier a very fast and high damage output weapon with four special attacks, um, it's just, it's, it's really good against the first boss, and... Um, the second boss it has to be killed by a melee weapon. Now, a lot of people use Scythe. I think Scythe could probably be better, but it does have a crush weakness, so um, Elder Maul could work. I've tested the difference between like using a Bludgeon and using a Crystal Halberd, and the Crystal Halberd seemed better, so I'm not sure how much of his crush bonus uh, matters. I think if you did have Scythe, it could be, end up being better. I will test it a little bit myself, because that is something I am curious at, but it does have a weakness to crush. So at least for now, we will be using an Augmented Elder Maul. The third boss, the Yeti, is weak to fire spells. So we have in our rune pouch the uh, ability to uh, do fire wave, and we're on the right spell look. Um, the fourth boss is weak to range, but not twist, uh, not a twisted bow. So what you could do is if you have a Serenic Bow, I would use that. Um, if you don't have a Serenic Bow, you could try a Blowpipe. Or you could just use melee since you already have melee. Um, let me. Ch it does have a higher stab defense than um, any other defensive style, so rapier might not be that great for doing it. But you could you could just use um, it anyways. I'll show you when we get to that part, and um, you can sort of judge for yourself if you think it'd be worth it or not. I think a lot of this comes down to um, knowing the mechanics, and again, I'll teach you them all, so you'll, you'll, you'll have a good idea for it, and just understanding your gear and what you want to do. Because if you're willing to switch, like you do an eight-way switch, obviously bring bring that. And another thing you have to remember is that you are limited to your, your food. You do have to complete six bosses in a row. You do get rations after the second and fourth boss, but they are um, pretty random and... They, uh, you might have to be uh, smart about it. 
Uh, the fifth boss is the Vanguard, which you have to use all three styles for. I'll get into more um, specifics on what, what you'd want to use, but it is weak to Twisted Bow, so for range you would want a Twisted Bow. It doesn't have any specific, uh, specific uh, melee defense, so Rapier will do very well there. And then for range, uh, or for magic, just the Fire Wave. Now this one is one that, um, again, there's, it's really up to your, what you want to do and what you think is worth it, because for the magic phase on the Vanguard boss, it is kind of difficult. Because and it's not so much that it has high defense; it's just that it's smacking you, and then you're on the fifth boss. You'll get no more. Um, you'll get you'll get no more rations or anything. So it could be it could be important to kill it quickly. And a, a popular strategy is to use Bryophyta Staff um, and focus that down. So if you have Bryophyta Staff right here, it can be very good on that boss. Um, it's also currently very good on the Yeti boss, but that's not intentional, and that'll probably be fixed. So I don't want to teach you a method that um, is going to get patched. But you could still bring both if you wanted to, and use the fire st uh, the fire spells on the um, Yeti boss, and then later down the road when you hit to Vanguard. But personally, I just use Fire Wave, and it works perfectly fine. It's it seemed it seems very well. And then the last boss is weak to a Twisted Bow, so we will just focus on that. So um, in terms of what style you're using, it kind of switches up a lot. So there's really nothing you should should focus on. Um, I would definitely bring an equal gear to all three, which is why I don't have um, boot switches or different gloves. The Salve Amulet does have a boost against the uh, fourth dude, the Koshi the Deathless, and the last person, Hazil. So that's worth bringing. It's also a very nice hybrid amulet. has stats and everything. Um, again, if you want to try to focus on one style over another, you, you, you're more than welcome to do that. But we're going with a nice little uh, hybrid setup here. And... Um, I'll get into the food and whatnot, and then we'll, we'll get us started. Also, um, yeah, the Grazzy Rapier would probably be better than the Rapier, the normal Rapier, but most people don't have it. Um, and even though they wanted to see best in slot, it seems wrong to include a weapon that no one really owns. But uh, yeah, that would be better. And then if you have the Scythe of Vitter, it doesn't actually get a um, damage boost against the, the Evil Spirit, the one that requires a two-handed weapon. So I don't think it would be best in slot there. It does have a damage boost against Vanguard and the Jungle Demon, but those two bosses aren't really that uh, that strong anyway, so uh, I would stick with either the Grazi Rapier or the Normal Rapier, and just for this video's sake, I will use the Normal Rapier. Now, if you don't have max gear, I, I guess I should talk about the lower end gear. Just bring the best you can. The The minimum, there really isn't so much of a minimum, because in order to do this mini game, you need to have an assembler max cape and a infernal max cape. You have to show them to talk to earn his approval. Once you've earned his approval, you can do this mini game, the boss invasion mini game. So you have to have those two items. And I assume if you have both of these items, unless you've quit and recently come back or something like that, you probably have a very good gear. Um, you're probably missing pieces. It's probably not so consistent. You can switch out whatever you want. Um, if you wanted to use a uh, helm of Needs Not as a hybrid helmet, that could work perfectly fine. If you wanted to focus melee and go Serp Helm, that could work. You had a chompy hat and wanted to go range, that could work. It's really up to you. Um, the gear you use isn't so important as long as you have the best you can, the best gear you have for for at least all three styles or some hybrid variation of it all. You know what I mean? So you could bring obsidian instead of that maskets. You could bring um, you could I mean you could probably get away with Arams. Instead of Robe of Darkness, you can get away with normal Armadill. I, I, I think you could very get away get away with a lot of things. Um, on my legit account, I don't use Elder Maul or Scythe. I don't have them. So I use a Crystal Halberd, and that's kind of a really low tier. It's not a low tier weapon, but it is a very easy to obtain weapon, and that will work very well. You don't have a Rapier. I wouldn't recommend a Slash weapon. Um, so I would say, well, yeah, I mean, I guess so, if that's all you have slash but you do want to focus on stab so if you have a rapier i would use it if you don't have a rapier if you already made a juggernaut um just use your juggernaut i that's what i use myself and it works so 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 you'll be fine with it it's a little slower um but uh yeah it's really just about what gear you have and what you're trying to accomplish as long as you've got your range stuff i, I would say t bow is really good but if you don't have a t bow for the for the last two waves um you could get perfectly fine with the for with the blowpipe or serenic bow if you have that I think if you didn't have a blowpipe, I would I would try maybe um, a crossbow, so that you could also use the um, Elijah Spirit Shield. Uh, I, I mean, if you just had rune crossbow, I think it would work. It would be slow, but um, I guess that's really up to you. And, and it's you know a part of the game. A part of the game of RuneScape is trying to improve your gear. So I think whatever kind of base setup you had would be perfectly fine. It would be very doable. 
Some people have been disappointed with the fact that this mini game isn't so difficult, but that was what we pitched. That was the original idea, was that it wasn't supposed to be insanely hard. It was a matter of knowing what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, and making sure you're doing it. You know, not AFKing, not um, losing, you know, losing concentration because you might get comboed out. So um, it's really just about knowing what you're supposed to be doing, and this video should help you. So let's get into, let's get started, let's get the food, and let's get going. Okay, so uh, for food, you want to use the best food you have, garden pies, since you can heal uh, two different slices. I think the total food is uh, 40, is one of the best food you can bring. I like to bring two chug jugs per, chug jugs are very good here, because um, what it does is whenever you sip it, you have a 1 in 15 chance of it breaking, and of course we break it first try, so we have to spawn ourselves another one, but um, you know the 15, uh, 1 in 15 chance of it being consumed, um, and it heals, I believe, 10 or 15, I'll double check in a second. Um, so it's a very good food, it can come very clutch. If you're low on supplies, you're on the last boss, and you can just ride a chug jug all the way. Um, so in, in order to make it, what you need to do is you need to have 15 invention, you need to have the slurp juice schematic, um, and then you have to make some slurp juices. When you have a slurp juice, use 20,000 or organic components, 1,000 uber components on the um, slurp juice, and you will make yourself a chug jug. So it is 1,000 uber components per, but I think it's worth it. Um, and I wouldn't recommend bringing like a full inventory because it's kind of overkill. It, it would obviously be good, and you can successfully do it. But I would recommend just like two and or three, and, and that that's what I use. Um, Slisky Shadow is an item that boosts all of your stats. It's a very high end weapon, so it is uh, or high end um, equipment. I don't know what you call it. Um, so it is uh, best in slot for sure. If you don't have this, um, I would just recommend bringing an overload, a normal overload. If you don't know how to make them, you can actually purchase them from the Zanera shop. So any any new, I mean, if you have Infernal Max Cape, I would hope you would know about the Zanera shop, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, I would bring that. It's not really worth bringing like. Um, like an imbued eye and then a imbued heart and the demonic tome, all three of those individually. I mean, if you wanted to, you could. It's completely up to you. I would recommend just one slot overload because that boosts all of your stats and that'll work just fine. We only bring one super prayer. You probably won't need it. Like I said, you do get rations and uh, it's possible you don't, uh, you won't receive a super prayer dose. Um, but even if you, even if that happens, I think one would still be perfectly fine. So this is what the inventory looks like. Um, again, runes. We just have a normal blood wave spell. That's what we're going to be using to start. Um, uh, I guess to start, you'd go into the lobby <laughs> and then go through the doors. So this is the first boss. What you're going to do is pray range. I would always use piety. You can afford to do it because, like I said, you do get some prayer points. And even if you didn't, you you got unlucky and didn't get the prayer pot both times that it rolls. I think you'd still be fine on one prayer pod dose. So this can't actually kill me, so it's kind of difficult to show you um, accurate. I mean, you can see that the damage hits; those are accurate. I don't have any damage boosts or anything like that. I just don't die, so I don't need food. Um, this boss is pretty straightforward. You'd probably want to unload all of your specs uh, on the first boss. I like to save them. I like to do like half. I do two specs on the first dude. Uh, and then I like to spec the second dude, only because the second dude can be slow if you're using a two-hander weapon that isn't um, quote-unquote best in slot or anything. But um, on my personal account, I use Crystal Halberd, and that was perfectly fine. His special attack can uh, can combo you. He can hit you normally and then combo you out. If you wanted to, you could try um, ranging from further away because uh, then you wouldn't be in his melee range. But I don't think it's worth it because his melee isn't very powerful. Um, I mean, it can it can hurt you. Everything in here can hurt you, but it's not so powerful that you need to be worried about it. What I would do is just get your best melee gear. Just make sure you're paying attention because, it, like I said, it can combo you out and then kill it. You can also ch uh, sh snag some bananas for some... Uh, you know, it doesn't heal much, and it could be more trouble than it's worth, but it is an option if you wanted to take it. So it's pretty straightforward from there. Just keep killing this guy. Okay, so once it's defeated, you will be teleported to the next boss. Immediately switch to Prey Melee. And then this is where you would use your Elder Maul, and basically the same setup. It can only be damaged by melee, uh, and specifically two-handed melee weapons. Another weapon that is kind of low-key good here is the Attacker Icon that came out with the recent event. Um, it's probably... Well, which, uh, what, uh, what is it? <laughs> 1056, there we go. Um, because the reason it's good is it counts as a two-handed weapon, and it's actually Crush, and this thing is weak to Crush. Um, and... The, the benefit to this would be that uh, it's on a f you're, you're hitting faster so you actually could uh, you could actually benefit from that if you were one of the people that had the attacker, attacker icon it's um, it's not bad here I, I think the scythe is probably better 
but um, Crush definitely seems to be doing its job. So it's pretty simple from there. This is the first boss that gives you rations, so don't be afraid to eat up to full if you need to. Um, I'll give you. I'll show you what that looks like when you're closer to killing it. Um, he also has a special attack where he can stun you, but it, it only stops you from eating. So don't try to eat. Just keep attacking him. It doesn't end your attack. So just keep. And if you click off, it can do it. So just if you get stunned, the best thing to do is nothing. <laughs> And just, just, just have auto retaliate on or whatever, and just attack it. The stun does last, I believe, is it six seconds or eight seconds? It's either six or eight seconds. But um, yeah, if, if it does happen, your best action is inaction. All right, so it's about die. We should receive our ration soon. It comes into your inventory. If you do not have enough inventory spaces, you just don't get it. So as you saw, we only got two dark crabs there because we didn't have enough inventory spaces. When you're here, you want to keep the same prayer. You want to switch to a magic. Um, you do want to keep your cape on. So this is one that I've seen a couple people do, and it's really up to personal preference. If you want, you can bring an imbued magic cape. It will do a lot of extra damage, as you guys know. But the this uh, boss has a special attack where, um, because of the cold weather, you can sometimes take extra damage if you're not wearing an Infernal Max Cape. An Infernal Max Cape is enough to keep you warm. So if you have this, you'll take 10 damage instead of 30. If you didn't have this, you want to use the other cape, you'll take 30 every time it does that attack. So it really just depends on you and what you think is worth it. Uh, again, you could try to use Embryo here, but I, that's probably going to be fixed very soon because it's not intentional. So I, I would recommend bringing Fire Wave because that's what gear will always be useful. And you can see it's not slow by any means. You you hit it enough. And this boss, other than its special attack, isn't very um, threatening. And the special attack really just matters if it combos you. So uh, this boss is pretty straightforward. We will keep... Okay, so I guess that is a good learning experience. Right there, I actually got a Dark Stone from killing one of the bosses. Whenever you get a loot that is a rare drop table or a special drop, it shows up in the lobby afterwards. So I will show you where it spawns. Um, if you're slow and not using the best gear, it might show up to other players. Uh, but it takes uh, five uh, It takes five, um, five minutes to show up. So this is what I was talking about with this boss, where if you really wanted to, you could just melee it. You see I'm hitting pretty decent. Um, but the best in slap method is to switch over to a nice uh, range style, either with the Twisted Bow or the Serenic Bow, and then go from there. He has a special attack where he'll say, Fear Me. He drains your prayer points and does a little bit of damage. And then once he hits 200 health points, he regains some health. So you essentially have to kill him twice. But he's not very difficult. He can hit through prayer slightly, and his special attack is a little annoying with the prayer drain. But you can see I've only used one sip two sips and there's no real threat of, of of being concerned this is also another boss that this is the last boss that will send you rations so if you need to eat this is the time to do it there's no reason to be at 60 health when you're fighting this dude because um, he's going to give you items anyways you see right there that's a special attack where he regains his health so it's very simple from here you just keep killing it and you will receive rations so do not be afraid to waste food now it is possible that you'll receive you're, you're guaranteed to always receive at least two dark crabs with a maximum of, I believe, eight. And then with the potion, you're guaranteed zero. So it's possible you can get zero with a maximum of two. I think it's uh, one dose sips. I believe, yeah, it's one dose sips. So, like I said, it's probably best to just eat up. Even if you don't get the extra food, I think it would be worth it. Um, but it's really up to you and how you see your run going. And if you need to, don't be afraid to use the Tug Jugs. That's what they're for. Because of the 1K... I mean, the 1K Uber component cost is not much at all, but it is enough to where I don't... I personally don't like the wasting them. Um, but if you don't care about 1K Uber components, you want to make a bunch of them, by all means, do it however you want to be doing it. So it is dead. We received rations. No super prayer. So this is probably one of the worst runs we could have had. Um, but even still, we're not going to have... Like I said, we're not going to have any issues with prayer. So this is the uh, the one that requires the most paying attention, if you will. Um, the good thing about it is it, it's the only monster that's not aggressive. So you do have time to like get your prayers and get your gear on. So you're going to start off with melee. Um, nothing, Like I said, nothing particularly fancy. What you're going to do is tack it down to 1,000 health. Once it's below 1,000 health, it can no longer be attacked by melee. You have to use magic. So just... Oh, oh I'm sorry. Pray, ma pray magic. Pray magic. Do not pray melee. Pray magic. We, you can saw we just got shredded right there. Yeah, you definitely want to. So, uh, just kill it. Keep an eye on its health. Once it drops to down to 1,000, we're going to switch to our magic gear. Um, the boss does use melee if you're standing in melee range. Um, so, whenever I switch to magic, I like to uh, move it to the side. Okay, so I believe it's at, nine, it's at 999. Sometimes it's not always so clear to, to tell. But if you're not doing damage and you get an XP drop, that means you're bad. 
And so this is where instances where like I know I'm you know I'm, I know this is negative bonuses so maybe that'd be worth it. It's really up to you and your call what you what you want to do, but um, it's that simple. And then once it drops down to 500 health, you're gonna switch to range. It is weak to T-bow, um, so we'll be T-bowing the the rest of it, and then we'll we'll just stay with the T-bow and finish up the last boss and collect ourselves a nice little reward. This boss isn't weak to anything in particular. The only weakness it does have is Twisted Bow, so yeah, it doesn't matter what you bring, just bring whatever you can. Okay, so now it's at 450. We're gonna switch right over to the range gear. And then we will be using this gear to finish the entire thing. As you can see, one pair pot is gonna be perfectly fine. And you do have the chance of getting those extra sips, so. If you wanted to be safe and bring two, by all means do it, but uh, one is perfectly fine. So we'll just finish this boss out. Okay, so here is the last boss. He's a special attack that can drain your prayer as well. He also has a chance to summon bats, but none of it is too concerning because he is super weak to the Twisted Bow. You can pretty much just try to tank him and focus on damage. So again, it's really just about knowing what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, and you can successfully do it with a cup of food left over. Um, should be easy every time. So if you have any thoughts, any suggestions, any questions, by all means, comment below. I uh, will finish this dude up, and then we will uh, we will see our loot. Notice I did cheat by using infinite special attacks. <laughs> There's really nothing I can do to, to do that. Um, it doesn't make a difference. The special attack normally wouldn't matter too much, but you can see it's, we're dead here. We, we didn't even trigger the bats. The bats aren't too difficult. If they do spawn, I would recommend killing them because they do have a very high... Um, they have very high accuracy, and they only have 10 health, so it's easier to just kill them quickly rather than let them focus you. But I would only recommend that if you were, uh, like, if you were starting the fight and it just happened to do it early on, because it's a it, it takes a lot of trigger. So here we have our one reward system. I will have a video out tomorrow talking about all of the rewards, how they work, and I will be doing a nice opening video. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Again, if you have any questions, any suggestions, any thoughts, let me know below. But that is Bosch Evasion, and it's that simple. All it requires is max gear. <laughs> no, no, it's it's very doable with other gear. You can see how easy it was with this gear. But on my, I'll show you my account right now. I, I, I guess I kind of have similar gear. I do have the crown. I do have twisted bow. I do have crypt armadillo. Maybe one of these days we'll do a challenge video where we, we attempt it with like the bare minimum gear. That could be really fun.